today we're going to cover 3-2, angles formed by parallel lines and transversal. And the learning target for this is I can prove and use theorems about angles formed by parallel lines and transversals. So we covered transversals and the angles last time. Today we're going to look at them with respect to parallel lines. So we have a postulate and three theorems we're going to talk about today. What we want you to notice right off the bat is the given in all these four are the same. We have, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, for this theorem, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, it's getting a hint, and if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So it makes it a little easier to know when to use these theorems if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Then, this is where it differs, for the first one, the corresponding angles postulate tells us the pair of corresponding angles are going to be congruent. And the same with the alternate interior angles theorem. They're also going to be congruent. Same with the alternate exterior angles theorem. They're also congruent. So let's look at an example of these. So we want to name the pairs of angles that are congruent by the corresponding angles postulate. So here we have two pairs. We have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. We know that they're parallel. We have the markings here. So let's figure out the different pairs of angles that we have. OK, so we've got the angle pairs listed here. We have angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding. And you can see the other pairs of angles, 2 and 6, angle 4 and angle 8, and angle 3 and angle 7. Now let's take a look at the alternate interior angles. Okay, so our alternate interior angles theorem states our two lines, parallel lines cut by a transversal, then their alternate interior angles are congruent. So in this picture we have angle 2 is congruent to angle 8, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. Again, they're alternating on opposite sides of the transversal on the inside or the interior of the angles, or the lines. For the alternate exterior angles theorem, we have angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 7. Again, they're on the exterior and they alternate. Okay, and our last one is our same side interior angles theorem. This one, we have same side interior, so we're looking at angle 3 and angles 8 are supplementary, and angles 2 and angles 5 are supplementary. All right, we're going to look at an example using some of these uh, postulates and theorems we just went over. So first, angle they're asking for is angle, the measure of ECF. So remember, we've got measure here. That means we want to find an actual number. So we're first of all, we need to see what information we've been given. Well, we have this picture. We have a transversal, and we've got two lines. And notice that we have parallel markings on the line. So that means we've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal, so we're going to use our, one of our theorems or postulates. Let's identify where angle ECF is. So we're going to start with ECF. So that's going to be this angle. And what do we know? Well, we know a couple things. We know that it is a corresponding angle to this one. And our theorem or postulate tells us that corresponding angles are equal when we have a transversal cutting parallel lines. So that means that angle ECF has to be 70 degrees. All right, example B now is asking for the measure of angle DCE. So which angle is DCE? DCE is going to be that angle. Again, we have our transversal, we have our parallel lines, so we're going to look at the information we have to figure out how to find the measure. Well, we know that DCE is 5x, what else do we know? Well, we know that angle ABC is 4x plus 22, so we're going to use that information to help us solve this problem. What kind of angles? The first thing you want to do is identify the angle type and that will tell you whether they're going to be congruent or supplementary or perhaps neither. In this case, they're on the same side of the transversal and they're 
at the same position relative to the line, so they are corresponding at angles as well. So we're going to set these two expressions equal to each other because we know corresponding angles are congruent. All right, so I set 4x plus 22 equal to 5x because those are congruent angles. And then I just went through the steps. Subtract 4, 4x. That gives me 22 is equal to x. And I have angle C, D. So x is 22. And then I have to remember, we're not done. We're at, they're asking us for the angle. We've got to plug this into 5x. So that's where this comes from. 5 times 22 is 110. 110 degrees. Whoops. Sorry. That is angle DCE. So angle, the measure of angle DCE is 110 degrees. And guess what? It's your turn now to use the postulate or the three theorems to figure out the measure of angle QRS as we check it out for example one. Good luck. All right, in this example, again, we have parallel lines because we see the parallel line marker and we have a transversal. So it's asking us to find the measure of EDG. So EDG is going to be EDG. So there's a number of ways we can do it. We see that EDG is corresponding angle to this angle, but we also notice that EDG is alternate exterior angle to FBC, and I think that might be a little bit easier, so I'm gonna actually do it that way. All right, so the measure of angle EDG is equal to the measure of angle FBC, which happens to be 75 degrees, so EDG is 75 degrees. Now look, at, let's look at the next problem, which is find the measure of BDG. So which angle is BDG? B, whoops. BDG. So BDG is the angle marked as X. So how can we solve this? Well, again, we have a couple of different ways, but the way we're going to solve it is by using the theorem that says this angle and this angle are supplementary. All right, so the measure of BDG plus the measure of AB, ABD sorry, the is 180. So I'm going to take the expression that for BD, for ABD, sorry, which is 2x minus 35, and add it to BDG, which is x, and set it to 180. I combine my like terms, and then I subtract, or add 135 to both sides. I end up with 3x equals 315, divide by 3, and x is 105. BDG is x degrees, so angle, the measure of angle BDG is 105 degrees. Ms. Briscoe, is there a way we can check our answer with some of the other theorems we just learned? There's lots of ways. We could, we know that this angle and this angle are linear pair, so they should add up to 180. So let's see, this was one, this is 105, and we already found out that this was 75. Do 105 and 75 add up to 180? Yes. So that helps us check it out. Excellent. Okay, now it's your turn for a check it out. Um, so find the measure of angle QRS in this one and write it on your paper and bring it to school the next day. Okay, oops. This is the check it out for example two you need to be doing. We had to go on there for a bit. Good luck and let's move on. All right, one more example. Find x and y in the diagram. So let's look at what information we have. First of all, these are parallel lines, so that's going to help us out a lot. How do, we, how do you know they're parallel? Again, it has the parallel line markers here. So they're all parallel to each other. We've got two transversals, and we're going to use this information and our theorems to help us figure out how to solve x and y. 
All right, so if we look at the diagram, we see that 5x plus 5y is a corresponding angle to 60 using m and n as our two lines being transse transected. If we look at 5x plus 4y and 55, we see that these are actually alternate interior angles using lines n and l. So I've set up these equations, and we're going to solve it as a system of equations. All right, so using a system of equations, I used elimination. So I subtracted this equation from. All right, so I had to correct a mistake, so we'll start all over. We subtracted this bottom equation here from the top, and we ended up with negative y is equal to negative 5. Divide both by negative 1, and we get y is equal to 5. Now we can plug it back in, y, y into the first equation here. And we see that 5x plus 4y is 55. This is equal to 20. Subtract 20 from both sides. 5x is equal to 5. Divide out the 5 and you get x is equal to 7.